in today's online session we will be discussing experiment number 4 which is to determine the coefficient of friction between two various materials by inclined plane the main objective of this experiment is to determine the coefficient of friction between two uh, surfaces of different pairs all of you must be familiar with the term friction already let's just uh, read the theory out when two surfaces are in contact, burr and roughness get interlocked, thereby making movement difficult. When a body moves or tends to move over another body, a force opposes this motion and an opposition is developed at the contact of the surfaces, which is basically friction. Another simple definition of friction says that it is a force which opposes or slows down the movement or tendency of any kind of movement. In this figure, it shows that the force F applied to a block, let's say a wooden block, at the base of the block is in surface to surface contact with the surface of the table or any horizontal surface. The surface is offering a certain level of uh, resistance to the block which is hindering the forward motion of this block. This is the surface and this surface is uh, providing an opposition force to the applied force, the force which has been applied on this block. This resistive force is called the force of friction. Now let's talk about magnitude of frictional force considering case number one. Case number one says that if you apply force uh, and the object does not move, then the magnitude of frictional force and the magnitude of applied force shall be equal. That's obvious if the opposing force and applied force are equal, the body will attain uh, a condition of rest because since both the forces are cancelling the effect of each other the body would be at its static phase and the object won't move we can also call uh, the frictional force as proportionate to the applied force because when the uh, frictional force is directly proportional to the force applied uh, it means that the frictional force purely relays on the intensity of how much force is being applied on that body and if the applied force is greater more resistance is offered by the surface of contact similarly if the applied force is less less resistance is being offered by that surface In the previous slide, we said that frictional force corresponds to the applied force, but a certain limit exists to that frictional force, which is called the limiting friction. Now, what basically that limit is, we'll study that in the upcoming slide. That limit is basically called limiting friction. It is the maximum amount of friction, frictional force that can be developed at the contact surface when the body is just on the verge of moving. And after that point, the body starts moving and the friction breaks. So that maximum amount of friction is basically called the limiting friction. Uh, considering this case, the block is uh, placed on on this horizontal surface whether take it as a ground or a table whatever it's placed on this horizontal surface in the position of rest and four forces are acting on this block among these four forces one force is the applied force which is denoted by capital P the opposing force is the force of friction denoted by F also called as the limiting friction and then we have a reaction force Rm which is acting normal right perpendicular to this block at 90 degrees and the weight of the block is acting downwards.
let's say this object is on the verge of point of movement so uh, in this case the coefficient of stat static friction would be denoted by mu equals to capital F divided by Rn where F is the limiting friction and Rn is the reaction force of this block. Okay, in this case, we consider the block is placed at rest on an inclined surface. In the previous one, we considered uh, a horizontal surface. And in this case, we are considering an inclined wedge, right? So the same forces will be acting on this block as they were acting in the previous case, in the previous scenario. We'll be having four forces. One is the applied force. One will be the weight of the block, which acts downwards. One will be the normal reaction force Rn which uh, acts perpendicularly on the block and the frictional force capital F. Considering the static state and applying the equilibrium equations, we have to resolve this weight W into its horizontal and vertical components. So here what we'll do, we'll consider this W and uh, we'll have to resolve it into its X and Y component and we'll be getting WA and WB. WB is the horizontal component which is equals to W into cosine of theta and WA will be its vertical component which is equals to W into sine of theta. When you apply the equilibrium equations and take summation of both these forces on both the axes A and B, you get these relationships. Once you get equation A and B, what you'll do is you'll take this equation C, which is representing the limiting friction, F equals to mu into Rn, and you have to plug this value simply in equation A. After you plug this value in equation A, you get P equals to mu Rn plus W into sine of theta. This is the equation you'll be getting after plugging the value of F in equation A. And right after that, what you'll do, you'll plug in the value of Rn, which is presented in equation B as W into cosine of theta. You'll place Rn over here. And this will be the final equation you get. After that, isolate mu. And that's the final equation E, which you'll be getting for determining the coefficient of friction between two surfaces. This is the apparatus which you'll be requiring to perform this experiment. All you need is an inclined plane, a calibrated arc, weights, a frictionless pulley, a set of slide weights having bottom surface of different materials, and a cord. These are the steps you will be following. First, you have to note down the angle of inclination and after setting the inclined plane. The top surface of the inclined plane is made of wood. Number second says place a slider of known weight W on the inclined plane. And tie the slider to the pan with the help of a cord which passes over a frictionless pulley. Increase the weights in the pan till the slider just tends to slide. And note down the weight in the pan including the weight of the pan. Repeat this procedure several times and you have to fill this table up with the values you tabulated. Surface of the slider basically tells you about the texture of the material you're using. You can either use a metallic slider, you can either use a wooden slider. So whatever texture you use, you have to mention it in this column. Weight of the slider will show the uh, weight of that block, that specific block which is placed on the inclined plane. Then you also have to measure the weight of the pan and mention it in this table.
the angle of inclination and after that in the end you have to determine the value of mu which is coefficient of friction you have to remember that the value of coefficient of friction depends purely on the material and the surface finishing rough surfaces have higher coefficient of frictions resulting in higher values of p to move the slider these are some precautions you should keep in mind and should take care of number 1 says the pulleys should be smooth and frictionless number 2 says the cord should be free from any knots number 3 weights should be put in the pan gently the cord should be parallel to the inclined surface in between the slider and the pulley and the surface of the inclined plane and the bottom of the slider should be clean you have to make sure the surfaces are clean that ends your experiment